Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. So Shomu sir, what are we discussing today? We actually have a good 3D based question out here, Harshal. Okay. Uh, let's first quickly read it and then we'll visualize it uh, together. Okay. So we have a uh, we have been given the base of a vertical pillar. So as soon as you read vertical pillar, you should I mean in your mind it should happen that it's a 3D kind of thing that is happening with uniform cross section. So what does uniform cross section mean? That when if you cut the pillar at any particular point parallel to the base, you will get the same cross section, right? So it is continuous, same cross section everywhere, something like that. And the cross section is a trapezium. So basically the vertical pillar, the base is a trapezium. And since it's a uniform cross section, wherever you cut it parallel to the base, you will get another trapezium, something like that, right? So uh, if you are aware of those geometrical shapes and all, uh, this is basically a prism, a prism having trapezium as the base. So you will have a trapezium at the base, trapezium at the top, and every corresponding points will be directly connected, isn't it? Right. Now, the trapezium has been defined to us. So who's meaning this trapezium, right? So the trapezium have the parallel sides of length 10 centimeter and 20 centimeter, while the other two sides are of equal length. Now that length is not mentioned, but they are of equal length, the other, other two sides. So basically, it's an isosceles trapezium. The perpendicular distance between the parallel side is 12 centimeters. All of this information is about the trapezium, right? So uh, it's about the base of the pillar, something like that. Now, if the height of the pillar is 20 centimeters, so now we get to know the, uh, the, the, the third dimension of the pillar, something like that. I mean, the trapezium is uh, basically a 2D thing, right? So if it is a 3D thing, there will be another, another dimension to it. So the height of the pillar is the third dimension, which is 20 centimeters. And we're looking for total area in square centimeter of all the six surfaces of the pillar. So basically we're looking for the total surface area of the pillar. Correct. So I'm just drawing a rough thing here, just a 3D one. So suppose this is the top of the pillar. Uh, the base will be congruent to it because as I said, uniform cross section. <laughs> And uh, then this will be connected, something like this, right? This will be behind. So it will be used dash lines for that. So this is sort of the pillar that we have, right? Uh, this is the base, this is the top, and these are the lateral surfaces, something like this. So uh, as the question says, I mean, six uh, total area of all the six surfaces. I mean, I, I hope you can understand the base and the top are two surfaces. And then uh, for each side of this trapezium, you have a surface on the third dimension, right? So there are Correct. four sides and hence there are four of these lateral surfaces, something like that. So uh, this is the uh, figure out here. You uh, you actually don't need to draw this if you can visualize it. But I just drawn you to, um, I've just drawn so that people can visualize whoever is watching this video. Uh, I, the more important thing is the trapezium because most of the information is related to the trapezium, right? So if you think about the trapezium, let me just draw the trapezium separately. So this suppose this is the base of the pillar, the trapezium out here. Let me just draw this a little correctly because it is isosceles trapezium. Ah. Yeah. So we have one side as 10 centimeter, the other as 20 centimeter. And what do we know? We know that this side is equal to this side, right? The other two sides are equal in length. Also, we know that the perpendicular distance between the two parallel sides is 12 centimeter, right? So if I draw up a perpendicular here, so this would be 12 centimeter. Uh, same thing here, of course. This would also be 12 centimeter. Now, what happens here? So if I think about this small figure out here, this is a rectangle, right? Because 90 degree, 90 degree is a perpendicular distance. So this is also 90, 90. Now this being 10, this much should also be 10. Right. And since the entire thing is 20 and this is 10, so we have 10 left out for this plus this, right? Now, I, I, I hope I don't have to explain that this figure and this figure are congruent, right? I mean, you can prove it very easily. I mean, this side is equal to this side and we have 12 here and 12 here because there's a 90 degree. So what this, whatever this is, I mean, let's say X, root over X square minus 12 square, whatever this will be, root over X square minus 12 square, this will be the same thing, right, Pythagoras. So uh, essentially, I mean, these two are congruent here. I mean, they should be symmetrically understandable by everybody. 
so this being 20, 10 left out for these two together, equal in length. So this should be five and five. Now uh, you can apply Pythagoras or a few, or, or if you are aware of the Pythagorean triplet five, 12, 13. So what will be the total surface area? We'll have the base area here. Since it's a uniform cross section, so that will also have the base area here. And uh, what about the uh, lateral surfaces out here? See, uh, this surface will be a rectangle having one side as the height of the prism and another side as this side of the trapezium, right? Height of the pillar is known to us 20. So this will be 20 multiplied to this particular side. So let's call this side one or something. Similarly, the front surface that we have, that will be 20 into side two. The left surface will be 20 into side three. The back surface will be 20 into side four. Something like this will happen, right? Each of these right. side, I mean, each of these surfaces are basically rectangles, isn't it? So uh, it's simply the two sides of the rectangle multiplied area. Now, if I add all of this, what are we basically getting? We are getting 20 times side one plus side two plus side three plus side four, which is basically the perimeter of the base. Right. Isn't it? I mean, perimeter of this particular this thing. So if you're aware of prism, then you don't actually have to derive this. I mean, you, you would be knowing this. We have done this in our classes also. So whenever you have a prism, the base area, I mean, it, it has to be a right prism. The right prism is something which has uh, a uniform cross section. So if, if you have the same base area repeated, so that will be twice of base area plus height into perimeter of the base. So that is basically the total surface area. So just figure this out. So base area, area of a trapezium is half into sum of parallel sides, 10 plus 20 multiplied to the distance between the parallel sides, that is 12. This is the uh, base area. But in the actual value, the base area will be doubled, isn't it? So this will be doubled in the total surface area. Plus, you will have 20 times the perimeter of the base, which is 10 plus 20, that is 30, plus couple of 30, so that is 26. So this will be the total surface area that is required here. So let's do a quick calculation out here. So 30 plus 26 is 56. 56 times 20. 56 doubled is 112 followed by a zero. And this is something like two into how this goes off. So you have 30 cross 12, which is 360. So basically one, four, eight, zero. Always match the unit. In this case, the unit should not be a problem because you don't have a different number of digits in the options. So the answer has to be one, four, eight, zero. Thanks. This was an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just a basic understanding of uh, total surface area of a prism. Um, just get the base area. In, in any kind of prism, I mean, if you have a right prism, in CAT, you don't have value of equipments and all. So if you, uh, if you are get, uh, I mean, if you are getting a question on prism, it will be a right prism. So uh, it will have uniform cross section. Uh, all you need to do is just get the base area uh, somehow, if you're looking for total surface area, that is. Uh, and then uh, double it and use the height into perimeter of the base. That's it. Right, right, correct. I mean, it can be any any kind of polygon in the base. Doesn't really matter. Right. For for instance, I mean, just uh, uh, just to give another instance, if you have the base as a circle and the figure is a cylinder, right? Okay. Now, cylinder in shape is also as a prism right now what will be the base of a uh, base of a cylinder it will be a circle and circle has an okay. area pi r square so as i said couple of base area so 2 pi r square plus height into perimeter of the base now what is the perimeter of the base 2 pi r right so height into 2 pi r is basically 2 pi r h so that is the total surface area of a cylinder, same thing. So it doesn't really matter what the base is. If it's a prism, this is the idea. Twice the base area plus height into perimeter of the base. Okay, all right. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir, for this uh, lovely concept. And thank you so much for this wonderful question also. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. If you haven't yet checked the full playlist containing this video, then check the description for the direct link. 
Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated with our daily questions, tutorials, and problem solving sessions, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. In addition to our daily questions, we also offer comprehensive preparation for CAT and other management entrance tests. If you're looking to excel in these exams, we highly recommend checking out these courses in our website. To get a taste of what our courses have to offer, we invite you to take a free demo. The demo will give you a glimpse into the quality and effectiveness of our teaching methods, study materials, and practice resources. You can find the relevant links in the description of this video. Have a nice and successful preparation ahead. See you in the next one.